and decrease the distortion by 25 decibels. So, uh, uh, nothing but good. The, uh, well, I ought to sit down and get my slide rule out <laughs> and calculate what the what that ratio is. Well, hell, it's 10 decibels. Yeah. Back when you were uh, actively doing a lot of the the work out here and and, re and uh, what do you call it uh, testing other speakers and all, did you did you have the opportunity to test some of these inefficient panels and see how uh, weak they were in the bass response and all? Uh, no, I've never uh, never fooled. Uh, yes, I have. I've had electrostatic speakers in the old lab across the street where the museum is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wow. museum, we went through there this morning shooting some, the last time I was up here we went through and I didn't have a video camera and I do, we just took still photos. I have a pair of short horns also that uh, I bought from a lady. $300 for the pair, she wanted 500 I talked her down to three and then I had it, they were, they were raw though. They ain't worth it. <laughs> they ain't <laughs> worth 300 <laughs> They have your name on them, though, so that makes well, you Well, uh, I wish they didn't because I'm ashamed. Uh, what was the theory on the big slot uh, uh, along the back of it back there? Was that for, for the back wave of the, of the cone to exert air, move air out of that slot and along the walls similar to the clip showing or what? It was sort of a uh, perverted uh, base reflex principle. <laughs> perverted. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was uh, an economic answer to electric voices. I've forgotten what their model was. Anyway. It had a response, a two-hump camel response, uh, two-hump camelback response, and uh, we managed to smooth it up by making a legitimate base reflex out of it. And from that, I learned that uh, did away with that the term base reflex is in the uh, in the public domain. That was a mistake on uh, the part of the guys that produced it. Jensen. <laughs> uh, Jensen should have copyright, should have trademarked it. Uh, you know, they have. Uh some some fellows up in uh, Utah right now, I believe that make that still manufacture. I think they still do the imitation clip showing, which you write about in your uh, audio papers. You know about imitation clip showings, but they have uh, taken the top section instead of having a big mid-range horn, they have a seven-inch mid-range cone driver, and then a, and then a, some other type of. How how are those guys able to do that? Because the patent is is run out or something, or well, uh, it looks the, just like the clip showing. It's. Uh, the, trade, the name Clipshorn is trademarked. Uh, they can make it, but they can't call it that. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, I stopped an outfit in Seattle from using the word Clipshorn in advertising it. It was a new and improved Clipshorn. Right. Well, I bought one. <laughs> and its response, well, hell, it goes down to about 70 hertz, a good honest 70 hertz. That's Mine it. goes down to 35, an octave lower, mm -hmm. and uh, their mid-range goes out farther than their tweeter does. <laughs> that's that's impressive, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was an awful lumpy response. You see? Did you see? Is the, can you see out the window out there? Is mm -hmm. it PWK? Yeah, I like your uh, your parking space out there. Where they painted your your logo on the. Uh, 
concrete. That's nice. That's about my only perk. What is? With parking place. I have you, two two private parking places, one down front and one out. Where uh, you are now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, when I came in this morning, I came inside. I had some, some caps. If you'd like a cap, I have one in the car for you with this on it. Uh, and I, ga I gave one to Jenny and to, uh, who's the gal, Rhonda, maybe, that answers the phone up there. I, I was going out to get them a cap when you passed by. Because every other time, the two other times I was up here at the factory, you weren't around. I was hoping that I could get to meet you. And mm -hmm. Today I was lucky. Uh, one way of uh, assuring yourself is to make an appointment. Yeah, well, I, I never, <laughs> I didn't have the guts to call up here and ask for you. You know, I said, well, uh, he's probably a busy oh, man. Doesn't, doesn't have time to fool with a yo-yo like me. Has, has some of these guys come offered you uh, big money, though, to try to buy this place out? Well, I've had several offers. Just decided and no. there's one pending right now. Really? Yeah. Not sure, you're not quite sure you want to let loose of this place yet, huh? Well, I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. I let more out of the... Uh, I let more... Out than you I should. got to the cat then than I than I intended to to say it's it's pending. Yeah. Uh oh. Well. Don't quote me. I won't. <laughs> I'm not gonna. This is just for me. This is just so. You didn't hear it. Fifty no. years. That's right. The camera didn't either. <laughs> That's so. Fifty years from now, I can show everybody the, the day. What is it? The 29th of June. When I came in and met Paul Klipsch, my hero. I wish I'd have had my plate with me so I could have gotten you to 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 sign or uh, autograph the back of it or something. You know? The plate, my uh, license plate for my car that's coming Ooh. in. Maybe what I'll, I'll do that on the next trip. Maybe I'll unload. You're from Lafayette. Lafayette, Louisiana. Yes, sir. Do you have a dentist up here in Hope? Do I have dentists? A here? dentist. Oh, yes. you, yeah. You go to several. Huh. No, only one. He's a fellow Rotarian. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. Broussard. Broussard? I don't know where he's from, but somewhere near Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah, Broussard is a little town right outside. Uh, the man's name is Broussard, oh. as I recall it. And he was a customer. Uh, I mean, he was a, a real, honest to goodness, died in the wool, uh, uh, Cajun. <laughs> Are you Cajun? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess you would consider us that. We were born and raised down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess you'd call us a Cajun. We eat all that hot food, seasoned food. Have you tried some of that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I took them back in the days when I was still flying before I plunked my airman's medical. I took a bunch of masons.